right, well, it is 4.33, so we'll go ahead and get started this, this afternoon with our Green Schools Quest celebration. Once again, thank you all for so much for joining us. We're um, looking forward to a wonderful afternoon together. Um, thank you as well for continuing in the chat to provide for your introductions and the school that you support, as well as your favorite Green Schools Quest project that you've participated in or supported this school year. So getting started, um, we wanna say thank you again um, for being here. We realize that today we've come together to rejoice, recognize and celebrate the incredible efforts of our schools, our mentors and our educators within the St. Louis area who surpassed the constraints of the school year, which has been like no other. Um, and also have shared and created initiatives that foster a more thriving, equitable and sustainable future for us all. So once again, thank you all for being a part of our time together this afternoon. This year's framework, as you know, provided a similar monthly summative report that was able to to be reviewed and shared with area school leaders to promote connection and the exchange of ideas during our monthly um, connection meetings in the virtual arena of Zoom. So getting started today, um, my name is Tracy Jansen. I am the chairperson for the Green Schools Quest Committee as part of the USGBC Missouri Gateway Chapter. And um, we are looking forward to this time together. I'm going to go ahead and give you all a preview to our agenda and what is to come. Um, for this time over the next 45 minutes as we should wrap up our time together by about 515. We're going to start off with providing a principles of sustainability overview, just explaining what the principles are as they've been our focus um, point for all quest pursuits across the school year. We're then gonna go into recognizing all of our Green Schools Quest participants from um, starting in October, 2020, all the way through this March, 2021. We'll then have um, Victoria Coleman sharing our Green Schools Quest participation map um, that visualizes for ourselves what our journey has been since our initiation in 2013. We'll then have a video shared of our Green Schools Quest project highlights. Um, our keynote speaker, Maurice, will be sharing with us about the impact of the Green Schools Quest on the St. Louis area and why it's so important to be a part of this program. We'll then have a preview to our Green Schools Quest for the 2021-22 school year that registration is now open for. And then um, link into our sister program of the Missouri Green Schools and talk about how your work in the Quest can lead into pursuit of becoming a Missouri Green School as well. And then we'll have our conclusion at the very end. Also, um, within the chat, we want to say thank you to Trisha Busseau, who's going to be monitoring the chat and sharing further information related to the presentation this afternoon. And also just a friendly reminder that um, please to have your microphone muted during our presentation as this is not a webinar and the presentation will be recorded. So thank you all. So getting started this afternoon. Um, as it shared before, 2021 school year, um, schools were, who participated in the Green Schools Quest uh, pursued thematic exploration centered around the principles of sustainability as captured within the rainbow that you see shown. So during October, we began with exploring our, the importance of place. Um, importance of place is identifying our area children through recognizing the importance of their community in relation to their school systems, neighborhood, and the greater area. As we moved into November, we um, moved into explorations of interconnectedness. And this is referencing how students learn through the support of their mentor and teacher that everything in our world is connected to everything else, that humans are only one part of the web and every community is made up of systems that revolve around one another. We need to recognize and honor the connections, always striving for sustainable solutions to conflict with core practices that may be currently underway. As we then um, moved into our winter season and to the month of November, children were able to develop their understandings with respect for limits. They realized every system has a carrying capacity and a point at which it can sustain no more. It is our job to maintain a state of balance within natural and human systems. Continuing to the next part of our rainbow, um, we've moved into our new year with uh, focusing on systems thinking and cycles. Students learned how systems are dynamic and responsive to changes over time through considering multiple viewpoints through a variety of tools. We can better project future consequences and create changes and actions that can be disruptive and negative to cycles for our future and instead move to a world of betterment for us all. In partnership with Black History Month for the month of February, the concept of social justice was explored by our community. Children experienced lessons in equity and fairness to meet the needs of living beings across places and generations. 
And then to wrap up our time in this year's focus in March, the Quest's partnership recognized themselves in demonstrating global citizenship within our community. Students learn that individuals can take action to affect change or impact the system in a positive way. We all have a responsibility to honor and respect each other and the environment that supports us, which exemplifies the Green Schools Quest program for our community. And as we look forward to our future in 2021 and into the 2022 school year, we will also continue in our system of cycles as we embark on a hybrid model for the Quest endeavors to come in the next adventures for our Green Schools Quest. So again, we want to say thank you to you. Thank you to our mentors. Thank you to our schools. Thank you to our students for engaging in each month um, over this past school year, the quest has it has been paired with a specific principle in sustainability. And so considering the principles, we want to give some special shout outs to all the work that has been underway. Of course, as shared during October, we focused two importance on place. You'll see lists in many schools and their activities, as well as the mentor that supported them. During the month of October, we had projects um, regarding poetry and encouraging community use of outdoor spaces, which were impactful to the communities that are served. In November, we moved into um, interconnectedness, as talked about, and many um, of our program participants launched opportunities for environmentalism and environmental clubs. In December, um, pursuits in energy and water conservation were explored as we um, students can their mentors, as well as their teacher leaders explored the respect for limits and understanding really what is available in our community and how to make conservation practices applicable to their day. In January, we then took a look at systems thinking and in our cycles and many of our programs um, decided to explore our sustainability development goals for our entire global system to um, implement and be a part of in their thinking and practices each day. As we moved into February, um, and again, our focus to Black History Month, environmental racism was explored by many schools as well as its impact upon the St. Louis area. And in March, again, we want to say thank you to our schools and our mentors as well and their partnerships and really realizing themselves as global citizens. One of uh, the large impactful projects was the Mississippi plastic pollution cleanup and really looking at what our citizens um, within our area are putting into the waste creation and how we can redirect it and take it out of our systems to provide for a cleaner and greener earth. So, as you shared before, this year's um, quest was a definitely different pursuit. And instead of our usual evaluation practices for judging and um, looking at what the projects entailed and the reports that were shared and provided, we instead had drawings for all the school participants. And the winners received $200 cash that were pulled. And we had five participants um, who received recognition in the fall 2020 drawing, including City Garden Montessori, Crestwood Elementary, Forsyth School, St. Francis of Assisi School, and Sunrise R9 School District out of DeSoto. Then in spring 2020, the same um, recognition was identified with the $200 cash drawing, and we wanted to celebrate and congratulate Crestwood Elementary, Mann Elementary within the St. Louis Public School System, Knifer Middle School in Kirkwood, and St. Francis of Assisi School and St. Joseph's Academy. Thank you again to everyone who had participated in the programs. Amazing projects across the board focused to the sustainability principles were implemented and successfully received, and we wanted are so appreciative of all the efforts across the board for everyone at from early childhood all the way through high school settings in the private and public sector. So now that we've had an overview of our principles of sustainability and the program recipients and awardees, we want to now share with you Victoria Coleman's work. Um, Victoria has worked extremely hard over this past year summarizing all past Green Schools Quest participants and I'm pleased to introduce her. Uh, Victoria currently serves as a sustainability education and communications intern at the USGBC Missouri Gateway Chapter while also working actively as an early childhood and family programs museum educator and sustainability intern at the Missouri Historical Society. Victoria was a mentor for the City Garden Montessori in this year's Green Schools Quest. So Victoria, it is yours. Thank you so much, Tracy, for that beautiful introduction. <laughs> and just, you know, reviewing this year, this school year, and what a year it has been, right, <laughs> for everyone. I'm so glad to see all of you all here. I know it's 
it's been a it's been a roller coaster every year, but we're so glad that you know you were able to participate um, and to join us this year um, for this new format. So like Tracy said, um, this year I kind of worked to compile um, many or well all of the different schools that have participated in the Green Schools Quest since it began in 2013. Um, and so here is a snippet of the map that I created. And it shows the over 150 schools, it's 180 now, right on the dot, that have participated in the Green Schools Quest since it began. Um, and so it's kind of ordered by year, so the amount of years that each school has participated. Um, and from the map, I believe someone just dropped the link in the chat. Thank you for that. Um, you can kind of move it around and see that we have had so many schools um, from so many different school districts and cities within um, Missouri and even into Illinois um, participating over the years. Um, and it's just really great to see the impact and how far this program has traveled um, across the state and into our neighboring Illinois. <laughs> um, so we wanted to kind of map out the participation just to sort of see where we want to head into the next direction um, to see where we can do a little bit of outreach and to see where we can kind of fill in those gaps um, in schools that maybe there haven't been that many schools in a certain region participating um, or maybe we wanted to outreach back to schools who've only participated one or two years um, to get them back into the loop um, and kind of reintroduce the program to them, especially now that we are planning to move forward with um, a hybrid option for this next school year. Um, so that's really what the map is showing. And we've ordered it by schools that have participated one year, two years, three years, four years, and then five years and more. Um, and so that's color coded on the map. Um, but yeah, we just really wanted to have this kind of visualization just, and it's really cool to see how far this program um, has spread. So, and we hope to continue growing and continue and be able to use this map to outreach to others. Um, and like I said, invite others back to participate as we kind of um, focus more on the rainbow sustainability and um, yeah, just more options of participation. So thank you all. I invite you all to check out the map. It's pretty cool. I'm not just saying that because I made it. <laughs> all right, and that's all for me. Oh, thank thanks. you. Thanks so much, Victoria. We are so excited to have this map and um, please do explore that. All of the attendees here, we invite you to do so. Um, it's always such a treat to see the wide range of schools that participate every year and are really working to create a sustainable future one project at a time. Uh, for any of you whom I've not yet met, my name is Hope Gribble and I'm the Education and Green Schools Manager for USGBC Missouri Gateway. I do manage the Green Schools Quest program along with our Green Schools Quest Committee. So now we are excited to share a video with a few highlights um, showcasing projects from this school year. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And just one second here. All right. A big thanks to Malaya Sai for helping to prepare this video this year. And let's, let's take a look.
Kudos to every student, teacher, school staff, mentor, and community member who has participated this year. Um, you truly are leaders in your communities, and we appreciate all that you have done this unique year. Uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Maurice Moya, a past mentor on the Green Schools Quest. Maurice currently serves as climate advisor for the city of St. Louis in the American Cities Climate Challenge and councilman for the city of Richmond Heights. Maurice, you can take it away. Hi, good evening, everybody. Hope, Tracy, Victoria, everybody, thank you uh, for having me today. It was nice to see all those beautiful projects from uh, the sound garden to the, the beehive and, and everything in between. So that's good to see when kids are doing great stuff. Um, Hope, can we bring up the presentation? Yes. Oh, I thought it was showing right now. Ah. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, one moment. So I will say in, I was, I'm an alumni from 2019 to 2020. And I worked at Brian Hill in Columbia with Britt and uh, the amazing Gender Rose. So I have to say the amazing Gender Rose because I think that's her predicate for, for the work that she does. So, uh, so yeah, I'm glad to be here today as well. And the presentation is coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> Just one moment, sorry. <laughs> it, it's a pretty short presentation. It's actually really visual to give everyone a kind of, kind of a good idea as to my background and my path to, to where I am today and how the Green Schools Quest has played a role in that, of course, as well. Yeah. All right. Pictures. There we go. Oh. All right. Great. Thank you, Hope. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. No, you're fine. Um. So, as as Hope said, you know, my name is Maurice Kimuye. I'm a Green Schools Quest um, alumni from 2019 to 2020. So we started before the pandemic and we ended during the pandemic, unfortunately. Well, during the pandemic as well. Um, so this is a picture of where I'm from. I'm from the US Virgin Islands. You see that little blue cloud and the green accented arrow. That's where I'm, I'm from. And actually that's where I've been about two weeks. So, um, uh, you know, being green is everything in the Virgin Islands because, it, as you can see, there's a lot of green. Um, let's 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 continue. Next slide. All right. So um, I went to Florida a and University and I went to FAMU FSU College of Engineering. So I'm an engineer by training. So people usually ask sometimes, you know, how. How did you get into the environmental space when you're an engineer? They say engineers are not as outgoing and as outspoken, but I tend to disagree. The engineers of all types, right? So um, I went to engineering school. I focused on uh, my discipline was electrical engineering. So I focused on power systems engineering, um, battery chemistry, electric vehicles, and just power systems in general. And the interesting tidbit about uh, Florida a and and FSU, the reason they were both created actually, this college was created, was because Florida a and is a historically black college and university. And Florida State was actually a women's college actually in its founding. So it brought a lot of, of women to engineering, um, but um, it's a tier one research university. And so they joined together to create this college as a joint effort. So I just wanted to show my, 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 my educational background. Hope next slide. Thank you. So this is my traditional background. So, you know, I worked in power systems engineering um, and, you know, I had a career at Ameren, worked for city utilities in Springfield, Missouri. I see a school in Springfield, Missouri did participate a couple of years back. I was looking at the map to see how far we went into the state of Missouri um, and, and in Illinois. Um, so I worked on, you know, very extreme, extremely high voltage equipment. So this substation you see here is called Cahokia and it's actually located 
in Cahokia, Illinois, which is essentially on the other side of the river. And this substation here that you see, this picture here, this is a transformer to the left. It actually powers most of downtown St. Louis. So a lot of the schools that were in this quest, um, I would say from Forest Park going to the river is powered by this substation. So it's, it's a critical sub powering the work that Green Schools Quest was doing even during the pandemic, making sure you know, teachers could be online and, 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 and um, you know, educate their children at a distance and also children could be at a distance receiving the education as well online and also participating in the, the Green Schools Quest as well at the same time. Hope next slide. So this, this was my time with the Green Schools Quest. So this was, it, it was really cool. So when I met Britt and Jen, actually Hope reached out to me and she said, hey, you know, we would like you to participate in the Green Schools Quest. And I was like, I don't know if I have time. And then she said, well, by the way, it's gonna be two schools as well. So, but she partnered me up with Jen and we were able to do a great job with, with Britt as well. And one of the reasons I wanted to do it was because it was going to be with kids um, that looked like my son and my daughter. So I wanted to make sure that I was present that they could see someone that looks like themselves that's also in this space as well, doing this great work. So that's, that is that really and truly, um, the rainbow of sustainability is one of the reasons I really wanted to participate in the Green Schools Quest. So thank you, Hope, for reaching out back, I guess, early 2019. Um, so in 2019, 2020, um, uh, Brian Hill and Columbia, you know, they won the Focus of the Year Environmental Justice um, Award. So, you know, St. Louis, St. Louis Public Schools can't afford styrofoam anymore. And so you can see here, if we calculated, right, how much styrofoam is used per month in the schools. You know, 840,000 styrofoam plates. That's 22 arches high. You know, that reaches from you know, that's, that, that, I don't know, that's a very long distance, right? So that's 2.63 miles of styrofoam that can take you from like Brian Hill, I think we calculated to, I think Forest Park or something like that, or from downtown to like Forest Park, right? So that's a lot of styrofoam. So what we did during that time was say, this is what we have, right? And the students really were intimate in developing this. You know, Britt made sure that they were really involved in actually doing a lot of this work themselves. And really, you know, Britt, Jen and I just helping supplement and kind of guiding them as you need to guide children as, as need be. So, you know, they looked up, you know, you know, they measured, you know, the styrofoam plates. We helped them do the calculation to see how much that would be per, 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 per month, per year. Um, and then also, we also helped them with, you know, saying, let's devise a solution that can help replace this. So dishwashers, single use utensils, and what that would look like. So we developed actually, actually a budget um, that St. Louis Public Schools could actually use to begin that process to transfer over to reusable plates, reusable um, utensils, and also dishwashers. And we calculated everything from the initial investment to investments that you would have to make every two or three capital years. And also the large investments of, you know, the dishwasher and also even the water use and the power that they would have to utilize. And we still came out in a positive manner in terms of cost for actually what they spend for the styrofoam versus, you know, the tipping fee and the environmental hazards of styrofoam in the environment. We calculated all of that with them. So it, it, was, it was a great experience, but I just wanted to show this to show visually how much this is per month in St. Louis, uh, St. Louis City Public Schools. 14,000 feet high. All right, next slide. Um, so th this, this is a picture we had with former Mayor Cruson. Um, you know, this is my time as a climate advisor for the city of St. Louis. So we've done many things to make St. Louis um, a, a much better place for everyone. I don't know if anyone saw earlier in the chat, you know, Emily, Emily Andrews, executive director of USGBC Gateway Chapter. She, she was talking about solar and I, and I was just poking some fun at her that Jen Rose is getting her system put up today, you know? So St. Louis, for example, with new construction is a solar ready city today. So new construction in the city um, needs to be solar ready for the city of St. Louis. And we've done it in a way 
that it makes all houses affordable. It's, it's very minimal work to, to really get that done. This here um, was a signing of making St. Louis an EV ready city, right? So that's cleaner air, less cost for operation of the vehicle and the future of transportation today. And, you know, we've been able to shine very well in this, in this um, through this pandemic, in this challenge as a city, because we, we, we have been the most comprehensive. You know, some cities are, thank you, Emily. Some cities are very ambitious with certain things and that, that is very good, but we are very comprehensive in what we've done. So we've passed things, for example, as like a, a building energy performance standard. My colleague, Rajiv Ravupati is here um, and, and, and many others that helped um, do that work. But it just goes to show that we're doing this work in a manner that's equitable for everyone because it's the least amount of cost to get the best benefit for the buildings that we build today and those that we renovate today um, as well. And next slide. So I just have these, you know, couple questions at the end. I just like to, to leave it some questions to leave things in, you know, people's minds. So how do we change the lives of students across the metro region as we were doing through the Green Schools Quest? How do we share best ideas and practices with our neighbors? So not just our other schools, but our neighbors down the street, wherever we may live or reside, or even not even down the street, but across, across the city or across the county or across the river. And how do we change our community through the hearts and minds of our children? You know, children are actually really easy at influencing in a positive way. And they actually take that home to their parents. So one of the best ways to really get change done is to work with children. And as they understand what the needs are, because they are the ones that are going to be dealing with the problems that we have right now and solving them. And how do they change their parents and, and their families today? So, and of course we do it one quest at a time. So um, here's my contact information, my NRDC email, my St. Louis city email and my cell phone. Don't hesitate to contact me, um, but thank you. And I enjoyed uh, giving the keynote today and, and thank you and thank you uh, everyone for inviting me. Thank you so much, Maurice. We really You're welcome. appreciate your participation as a mentor and sharing all of this with us today. You're welcome. And, and I would leave to, to talk about one thing just quickly. Sure. Um, I was listening to um, Senator Duckworth on the radio this, this afternoon, and she's working with Representative Bush on some, some really good environmental justice items. But just, just pay attention to how we have representatives that are framing this as civil rights being a part of environmental justice. So I just wanted to leave everyone with that as well. So thank you. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Um, hope it's okay if I go ahead and share my screen. Yep. Okay. Or, or I can go ahead and just run through this one. Yep, go ahead and do that. That'll be great. Okay. So the Venn diagram that you see is representative of um, our Green Schools Quest for 2021 and 2022. And again, I also want to say thank you to Maurice for his amazing keynote, um, because it leads us into exactly where we're headed for the future. Um, one quest at a time, really making that positive change for our world. So this year's adaptive format was so well received that we're excited to offer a hybrid program for next year. So hope if you want to advance for the rainbow. The rainbow is going to continue to be a part of our experiences um, for the quests in the coming year. So the traditional program that we've had in the past consisted of one comprehensive six month long sustainability project. We're gonna still maintain that opportunity for our schools. Teams will be able to turn in a five minute digital presentation and written report documenting their project at the conclusion. These will then continue to be reviewed by a panel of judges as they had been in the past and winners are determined at the elementary, middle and high school divisions. Winners will receive trophies and cash prizes for their work um, across the six month time frame. We're also going to provide for our schools as well the adapted format that occurred this year, um, which will provide for themed monthly sustainability challenges. And at the end of each month, participants will once again be able to submit a short description and photo of their work. Cash prize winners will also be drawn as they have been this year um, at random from the submissions that are received each month. 
This new hybrid model of smaller thematic focus or a larger design of systemic change enables our schools to explore their pursuit of sustainability projects that best meet the needs for their students, staff, and the community. And during the coming school year, partnerships with mentor and area school staff will be able to decide their project of pursuit and which model will best meet their needs for evaluation, implementation, and reflection to create sustainable practices for their future. All projects will be asked to maintain a focus to our rainbow um, and its principles, with perhaps selecting one or more to be a, their point of design. And registration is now open through September 15th. So we realize it is the end of the school year, but know that you can register at any time over the remainder of the year into the summer, but it will conclude on September 15th. You can also find school and mentor registration forms for the upcoming school year on our website at greenschoolsquest.org, and we look forward to your continued partnership in the upcoming year. So speaking of partnerships, we have some amazing sister programs that we are a part of. And for our continued growth, Hope and Leslie Moylan will now introduce our Green Schools Quest sister program, Missouri Green Schools. Thanks so much, Tracy. Uh, the Green Schools Quest is just one of several programs within the state of Missouri that supports the advancement of school sustainability. Missouri Green Schools is a separate yet complementary program which offers tools and resources for participants to take a systems-based approach to greening their schools. It is a program of, uh, it's a joint program of the Missouri Environmental Education Association or MIA and USGBC Missouri Gateway with the support of the additional organizations who are listed here. So joining me today to share a little bit about this new program is Leslie Moylan, the executive director of MIA, who I am excited to work with daily on this program. Thank you so much, Hope. And thank you, Maurice, for your keynote. Um, when you said, when you answered your question with your three questions about how do we change lives? How do we share, you know, this opportunity and how do we change community? One question at a time and one Missouri Green School at a time, I would say. I would add that as well, because that's exactly, we have the same vision on the Green Schools Quest and Missouri Green Schools. So um, real quick, we're going to go through the basics. Um, it's a free program, statewide tracking and recognition for pre-K to 12th grade schools, and it's very holistic in nature. It offers recognition for these levels of advancement, um, from very basic, um, fill out the form, start a green team on up to flowering dogwood, which is you're ready for um, to be nominated for national recognition. So it's really um, a great program. Um, we're currently in our pilot phase and we're seeking schools to participate. It's a rolling enrollment um, with an annual recognition. So you can enroll at any time, really. Um, plus, Schools with 60% or more free and reduced lunch will receive additional one-on-one -on -one support to navigate the program and set goals and track progress. And we have two of our awesome VISTAs here today on the call um, who are helping get this extra support solidified and ready to rock and roll. So that's been awesome working with them. Um, so just in a nutshell, kind of the three things that we're trying to do as a program. We're trying to lower environmental impact and reduce costs, improve health and wellness for students and staff, so kids and grownups and the community. And we're trying to incorporate effective environmental and sustainability education into the school, the whole school. Um, and so those things that we're trying to achieve, we are taking a systems approach to achieving them. So we're working in these three areas you see here, the buildings and grounds, which is just like it sounds, um, organizational culture, which is you know things like shared values, social norms, and practices. Those things like is styrofoam okay or not, you know. Um, and then there's the educational programming. So it's what we teach kids with our explicit and silent messages. So those things like the kids working on posters, then placing them around the school. Um, you know, having mentors who look like the kids in the school, those are all those silent messages that are just as important as the explicit messages. So lots going on in the systems approach. Um, and then we put it all together and what we're hoping to have is whole school sustainability. Um, and I think it's just a beautiful vision and I'm so excited um, to be 
connected with the quest on this vision. Yes, so Missouri Green Schools is an annual program oriented towards ongoing expansion and improve, improvement, ideally driven by a diverse group of stakeholders within the school. It begins by establishing where your school is currently at, your starting point through the use of a self-assessment tool. Then a green team is created and participants begin to establish baselines, set and work towards goals and track the progress along the way. A continuous loop of tracking, planning, and implementation is created. And at the end of each school year, schools submit a prompt for review and are then recognized at a level aligned with their achievements. The primary tool that schools use to track their ongoing achievements is called the Sustainability Tracking and Roadmap Tool, or START, which is developed by an organization called the Green Schools Alliance. START includes yes or no questions across roughly 50 metrics uh, that can be used for self-assessment tracking of school level sustainability and to generate ideas for next steps. The tool also allows for document and photo uploads so that you can have you know, one repository for collecting information about all of your green schools related activities and achievements all in one place. This program is also in addition to being a statewide recognition program, it's also a pathway to a national recognition called U.S. Department of Education Green Ribbon Schools. Um, this award recognizes schools across the country that have demonstrated excellence across the three pillars that we mentioned earlier, the reduced environmental impact, improved health and wellness, and increased sustainability literacy. Uh, each state's Department of Education can nominate up to five schools per year to be considered for this prestigious award. And since 2016, we've been working with the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to facilitate this program in the state of Missouri through Missouri Green Schools. Um, as you can see here, uh, all of the schools noted are past recipients of Green Ribbon Schools, and those that are in bold and green font have also participated in the Green Schools Quest. So really highlighting the complementary nature of these programs. Uh, I'd also like to call your attention to this year's uh, honoree, that, which was just announced last week, Flants Early Learning Center. If you are not yet familiar with Flants, definitely look them up. Um, they are uh, just doing amazing things within their learning community um, and environment. So this graphic, we're just about to wrap things up. I know we've just hit our, our quarter after mark here, um, but we wanna kind of end things with this, this graphic here, um, summarizing the connection between all of these programs. Um, schools may participate in one or all Missouri Green Schools pictured in the center helps to do the tracking and assessing, um, you know, looking at where you're at across the sustainability continuum and um, really uh, taking that holistic approach. The Green Schools Quest is focused on project implementation through student driven initiatives. Both of these programs go hand in hand. They're both annual programs. Um, either one is an entry to the other. Uh, I would challenge any schools or encourage any schools here who have participated in the Green Schools Quest for three years or more to please consider also engaging in Missouri Green Schools so that you can begin taking things beyond just one project at a time and really starting to integrate sustainability through, um, through the, the buildings and grounds curriculum and culture of your school. Um, on the right, you'll see Green Ribbon School um, that is achieved through Missouri Green Schools and the state of Missouri. And along the bottom, there are two professional development opportunities uh, that support schools throughout the year. Um, Sustainability Institute in June and the MIA Annual Conference, which is held in the fall. Uh, speaking of Sustainability Institute, this year will be held on June 14th and 15th, half days, only $25 uh, to attend. And our theme this year is exploring the interconnectedness of people, animals, and plants in our shared environments uh, through the One Health framework. So we hope that you will join us there. You can find more information at the that website. Thank you, Hope. Um, as many of you know, the benefits of green schools are far reaching and multifaceted. And we just wanted to call out that we've kind of divided them into these four categories. We've talked about recognition. Um, Maurice talked a lot about the cost savings. Um, there's also the PD opportunities and all the learning and networking associated with that. 
And then of course there's the outcomes. And so I just wanted to call out that health is such a big part of all of this. And that's something that um, you know people are starting to become familiar with, but we just wanna kind of drive that home because um, we know that the health of our surroundings and the environment directly impacts our per personal health and wellness. And we know that healthier students and engaged students are better learners. Um, and the Green Schools work supports both student engagement and health. And um, we just know that this is all important for students and staff. So to kick things off, um, let us know if you're interested. It's super easy. There's an enrollment form online. Um, we'll help you create a green team that's gonna be super foundational for long-term momentum of your program. This, that's a big piece of it. Um, and we've got lots of info on our website about that. And then there's a, a self-assessment that you can take to just kind of do a quick and dirty, how to, where are we at and what should we do to, to get started? So um, we would love to talk with you if you're interested. So we just want to say thank you all once again for joining in our annual celebration. We look tremendously forward to continuing our quest in the hybrid model for the 2021-2022 school year. We also want to say thank you, um, hope on the next slide for all of our presenters who joined us today for um, recognizing and celebrating this year's quest. We want to say thank you to Victoria, Hope, Maurice, and Leslie, as well as Trisha for their service and their time today in presenting all the amazing work um, across occurring across the entire St. Louis area. So thank you again. Also our sponsors for all that they do in providing and supporting the, our initiatives in our quest, um, including Ameren, St. Louis County Public Health, the Innovative Technology Education Fund and ongoing support by um, the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. And follow up to as Leslie shared, um, you are welcome to explore their partner websites and sister sites at um, MissouriGreenSchools.org. I learn more about the Sustainability Institute at Webster EDU, as well as our Center for Green Schools, MIA and Earthways Center. And of course, our Green Schools Quest site, um, GreenSchoolsQuest.org for enrollment and registration for the coming school year. So thank you all again and wishing you a wonderful conclusion to the 2021 school year and more to come in the future. So take care, stay healthy, keep it green and sustainable always thanks so much for joining us tonight bye everybody bye thank you